Making a blanket, especially a crochet blanket, requires a few supplies. For this blanket, you will need a crochet hook. I'm using a 55 millimeter for my blanket. A yarn needle for weaving in tails at the end. A pair of scissors and two colors of yarn. For the main body of the blanket, I used three full balls and a little of a fourth ball of my main color. I only needed one ball of my border color. This will depend on your choice of yarn and the yardage that specific yarn has. My yarn has around 180 yards or 165 meters per ball. One other option for this blanket is to have an, a crochet applique. I bought the pattern for this applique on Etsy and I will show you how to attach it to your blanket. We start the blanket with our main color. Make a slip knot and chain five. After the chain five, slip stitch into the first chain to make a ring. To begin the center of the blanket, chain three. After the chain three, place two double crochets into the center of the ring. Your beginning chain three counts as your third double crochet. Chain three, you are making a corner. Three double crochets into the center of the ring. chain three to create your next corner. Again, three double crochets into the center of the ring. Chain three for your next corner. three double crochets into the ring. And your final chain three. This is your last corner. When you finish this chain three, you will slip stitch into the top of the beginning chain three. You have just completed the first round of this blanket. If you want, you can tighten up the center by pulling on the tail if you crocheted around the beginning tail. For round two, we begin by slip stitching to the corner. There should be three slip stitches. Each new round will begin with slip stitching to the corner.
chain three. And place two double crochets into the corner. Chain three. And place three more double crochets into the same corner. All corners will consist of three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. Chain two to bridge the space you need to the next corner. Place three double crochets into the next corner. Chain three, three more double crochets. Your chain two bridge to the next corner. And again, three double crochets. Chain three. Three double crochets. Your chain two bridge and into the last corner three double crochets Chain three, and three double crochets. Your chain two bridge and slip stitch into the top of the beginning chain three. Round two of your blanket is done. Round three of the blanket is the round that you will continually do until you reach the size of the blanket you want. Again, we slip stitch to the corner. Create a corner by chaining three and then two double crochets. Chain three. Three more double crochets. Chain two to 
to create a bridge to the next opening. Then place three double crochets in that opening. Chain two to bridge to the corner. Then repeat your corner. Three double crochets. Three chains. And then three more double crochets. Chain two to get to the next opening. And then place three double crochets into that opening. chain two and redo another corner. The granny square isn't hard, it's just the same repetitive movements each and every row. With the granny square, you will continually add four sets of three double crochets for each round. That's one new set of granny three double crochets on each side, every row or round. This is an infinity granny square, meaning there is no joining to other squares. It'll just be one solid granny square. Don't forget your last chain two and slip stitch into the top of the beginning chain three. Just like you've done for the last two rounds. Round three is finished and this is what you will continue to do for as large as you want your blanket to be. With this type of blanket, there is no doubt that you will need to join more yarn. I do this by crocheting until I have just a small little bit left. And then I bring in the new yarn. For my blanket, it's the same color. And what I do is, I tie the new yarn into a knot around the original piece that's part of the blanket.
So I tie a simple knot around the existing piece with the new yarn. But as you can see, this is not very secure. It can move around. So I tie the old yarn around the new yarn as well, creating two knots. Then I pull the two knots to where they're connecting into each other and I cut the tails. This is a great way not to have to tie in tails all the time when you're finished with the blanket. And it's pretty seamless because as you will see soon, the knot goes into this type of blanket very well. I remove the tails and I continue crocheting. As you can just see, the knot went into the crochet work without me even realizing it. I continue along and I'm looking for it, not realizing that it has already gone into the work. Here I am feeling through the work, trying to find that knot, but I couldn't find it, so it went into the work very well. Sometimes you have luck, such as this, and other times it will be stand out a little bit, but it won't be too noticeable. I always try to hide it within a stitch. As you can see, joining new yarn is not that hard and will not be that much of an issue with this blanket. For this blanket, I chose to use a differing color for the uh, border. Here you see me finishing off the last of my granny square in the original color. At this point, I have 24 clusters on each side. This border requires an even number of clusters or else the shell stitch will not work. Here I am joining to the beginning chain three. I tie off and cut the yarn, leaving a good piece that I can sew in later. I bring in the new color and I start in a corner just like all the other rounds of this blanket. I insert my hook, place the yarn over it and pull it through and basically make a chain to join. There are different joining methods, but this is one that I like. And I place two more chains, so this becomes my beginning chain three. And for this border, it actually requires two more rounds of the stitches that you have been doing already, so make two more rounds of the granny square stitch. At the beginning, I do like to try to hide as much as that tail as I can. So I crochet over it, at least for the first two double crochets.
then I chain three. And the tail will not carry very well through the chain, so I just leave it and I will sew the rest of it in later. Three more double crochets into that corner. Chain two and go to the next space. I will do two rounds of this and I had 26 granny square clusters when I was done on each side. Again, you do need an even number or else the border will not work. After you have two rounds of the granny square clusters in your border color, finish off, but do not cut the yarn. Go ahead and connect the last granny cluster with a chain two and slip stitch into your top chain three. Here's where it becomes different than what you have been doing. Make sure that you have an even number. You can count the rows of this type of blanket through the corners. I have 26 rounds, so I have 26 clusters on each side. Start from the center and count at an angle towards the corner. Here you can see I'm doing that very thing, making sure that my number of rows is even. I confirm I have an even number. So now I can begin the shell stitch on the border. To do this, we place a single crochet into the chain two space behind where we just finished the granny squares. This is not in the corner, it is in the empty space before the corner. Now into the corner, we place nine double crochets. Make sure to count that you have nine double crochets before you continue. Into the next space, which is the chain two space, place one single crochet. Into the next chain two space, you place seven double crochets. The corners are the only area where you place nine double crochets. On the edges of the blanket, you will place seven double crochets every time. The pattern for this style of edge 
is to place nine double crochets into the corner, place a single crochet into the next empty spot, and into the third spot you place seven double crochets, and then back to one single crochet, and then back to seven double crochets. It is just a repeated pattern. As you can see, one single crochet. Now into the next spot, we place seven double crochets. As you can see, this is a simple pattern for an edge, but it makes a very pretty edge. So after the seven double crochets, we place one single crochet into the next chain two space. And when you get to a corner, you place nine double crochets into the corner. For the chain two spaces before and after the corner, they should have some one single crochet in each spot. To finish the border, you place your one single crochet then seven double crochets. Then your final single crochet. And then slip stitch into the very first stitch of the beginning of your border. and then fasten off, leaving a tail that you can sew in. Something that is important with crochet is to weave in your tails when you are finished with your project. Here I'm using a yarn needle. It has a large eye and a blunt tip. And I am feeding my yarn into it and I will bury the yarn within the work going all sorts of directions. If you just go in one direction, the tail will easily come out. So it's best to zigzag, go through it as much as a random pattern as you can. I also like to tie small knots with that tail throughout the work and continue weaving. This just gives it back up places for in case that tail starts to come out. It has a stopping point so it won't fully pull out right away. These tails are known to come out, no matter how well you hide them. It all comes down to how long the blanket has been used, how it's been used, how old it is, how often it gets washed. Because if you do not wash them delicately, the agitation from a washing machine can cause issues for the tails to appear and you will just continually have the issue of the tails appearing and coming out and your work can also come apart. This is the tail that we crocheted over at the beginning. As you can see, I left it long and I will also sew it in like I did the first one. This is just a personal preference. I don't always think that crocheting over a tail is secure enough. 
So I like to add extra security by extra knots that you don't really feel in the work. And to continually weave in that tail in different directions than how I crocheted it in. One of my favorite places to crochet is in those corners because the stitches are tighter because there's more of them. And I find that the tails hold better in tighter stitches. For me, this blanket only had four tails. The beginning tail at the very center of the blanket, the tail of the original color that I'm sewing in now, and two tails for the border color. Now, if you did not do the joining method that I did for adding new yarn, you could have more or you could have less because you decided to crochet over some of these tails and you're done already. However, I decided to be extra cautious with this blanket due to the fact that it is going to a small child. So I decided to make my tails long and to be able to sew them in in multiple directions and have extra stopping points because I know this blanket will get washed quite a bit because it is for such a young child. Don't forget the very first tail, which is at the center of the blanket, so it takes a little bit to find it. And for this one, I like to just go around in the circle. That is the center. It helps tighten the center of the blanket. And then I go out into different directions to help with the tail not coming out. As you can see, I thought about tying off at that point, but I realized I can continue sewing it in. So I did. And as you can see, that section is particularly tight, so I was quite happy with that. And I came back to the center and to that tight beginning and made the tail go through it, and then I cut it off. And if at this point you would like to finish, your blanket is done. However, the next lesson will be about applying an applique. If this is where you stop, congratulations for making a fantastic blanket. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Sewing an applique onto a crochet blanket is something that can be cute. Here I have a mousse applique that I bought the pattern off of Etsy. I created it and now I will put it into the corner of this blanket. I'm using a yarn needle and a very, very long piece of yarn that is the color of the main body of the blanket. My piece of yarn that I'm pulling out is probably four five to even six feet long. It sounds like a lot, 
but when applying this applique onto a blanket it does take a lot of yarn because you have to sew where it cannot be seen as you can see I just kept pulling I figured having too much was better than having too little and having extra tails that you have to try to hide As you can see, it's very long. I go ahead and thread my needle. I did use the body of the blanket's color for the needle. Here I am placing the applique onto the corner of the blanket where I think I like to where it looks. And then I begin slowly sewing it on. Now, the point of this is to sew it on where you cannot see the stitches. A few here and there will probably happen, but you don't want to see all of them. So what you're basically doing is splitting the yarn on, of this applique to sew it onto the blanket. Now, sewing it into the blanket is okay because you're using the color of the blanket. You just have to hide it from on the applique. So you're basically just sewing half of the applique onto the blanket, the back half. This is a slow process and you need to take your time or else it will not come out nicely or evenly. And what you basically do is sew around the edge of the applique, making sure it's laying where you want it to, as you continually go around the outer border of it. As you can see, you can pin this into place. I did not have my pins with me, so I just continually re kept replacing it and adjusting it. As you can see, I only really use the back of the applique. I am also trying not to sew through the blanket. I'm sewing into the blanket, but not com completely through to the back. This does take a little practice, so if it doesn't turn out right the first time, you can undo it. This is actually my second or fourth, second or third time of applying these appliques, and the first time, it didn't look the greatest, and I completely undid the whole blanket, and which was a week's worth of work on a blanket. The second time, it was better, so I was able to accept that it was okay. This time I was very happy with how it came out. And so was the person I was making this blanket for. As you can see, half of the uh, little moose is sewn on. The antlers were probably the hardest part because they're so small. So I had to be very careful. And also, this blanket had those large holes in it, so I sometimes did not have a spot to connect the moose to the blanket. I had to gauge where I could sew it. Here I am struggling to make sure the needle goes through the antler, but also not show the yarn from the front side. If you can see the needle from the front, you will see the yarn from the front. And we really don't want that, especially if the yarn is not the same color 
as the applique. If it is, it's a little easier. And as you can also see, that really long piece of yarn I had cut off to sew this on is already halfway used. So you do need more yarn than you think you will to sew this on. As you can see, you just continually go around the applique's edge, sewing into the blanket and sewing into the back of the applique to slowly attach it to the blanket. And it is a time consuming thing, but it does make the blanket cute. And more people will probably buy items with these appliques. After you have sewn around the applique, tie your tails into a knot behind the applique itself. This should be around the starting point where you have your first tail hanging out. Then you start weaving in the tails in random patterns just like before when weaving in the tails of the blanket. <laughs> 